Today, we're going to cover the trade value for three running backs for Dynasty Fantasy Football. We're going to start things off going with a top-tier running back, then do a mid-tier running back, then do a dumpster dive running back. That way, we hit everything. And we do this about once a week, so eventually, we'll touch base on all the running backs in the league over the course of the offseason. If there's a player you want me to talk about, drop it in the comments below, and I'll try and hit on them in the next few videos also, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of this content. I'm dropping free materials on here all the time. It's going to help you with your Dynasty team. It's also going to help you in season with your Dynasty and redraft teams as well. But let's get this party started. Let's look at the first player we're going to talk about today. And we're starting from the top here. And we're going to be looking at Kenneth Walker, running back from the Seattle Seahawks. He's just 22 years old. And in December ADP, he was the RB2 being drafted in the top five with a 580p, which is high, and I predict that's going to drop a little bit due to what I've been seeing in mock drafts here recently. So expect some change coming, but not so much where he's like a sell or anything. This season, he rushed for 1,113 yards and 10 touchdowns, had 3.08 yards after contact per attempt. He's also forced 50 missed tackles. He's had three RB1 weeks, five RB2 weeks, 10 games with double-digit PPR fantasy points. We need him to do a little bit more in the passing game. He only saw five or more targets in two games out of all the games he played in. However, he was productive, still just 22 years old, and showed some good stuff on the field. Going to the Dynasty League Football Trade Analyzer, we're looking at him on that calculator, and he's worth less than the 101, but he's worth more than the 102 when it comes to calculator points. It's kind of like the 102 in a second, kind of gets it done from a point range space. But really, if you're just dealing with straight picks, looking for the value, looking for the currency, kind of got to get creative with it a little bit. But less than the 101, so he's less than B. John Robinson, obviously, but more than the 102 in one QB leagues. In two QB leagues, I bet you the 102, 103 might be able to get it done, or at least it's going to be a lot closer. Looking at the trade finder, looking at actual deals as happened per my fantasy league. Walker for Jalen Waddle. Walker for Debo Samuel and a third. Walker for Austin Eckler. Walker for Amon Ross St. Brown and Ezekiel Elliott. Walker for Joe Mixon and Traylon Burks. Walker for Nick Chubb. He's expensive. No matter how you try to get around it, he is not going to be cheap you're going to have to save up to get him his price tag has increased and it should stay that way until something happens it should be good and holding strong throughout the off season and honestly unless he falls on his face early next season should hold it during 2023 as well if you're trying to sneak away with a discount the best time might be during the rookie drafts if the prices in your league inflates for those rookie draft picks which they might, and you might be able to catch him at like a 10% discount or so, but nothing crazy because he's still regarded as a young running back who's been productive, and those are not cheap. You can sell him anytime if you need to unload because sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and if you got that one asset that you can get a haul for, go ahead and do it. You can do it now, you can do it during the off season. you can do it right before the season, Whatever's best for you, whatever's best when you're reading the tea leaves of your league. He's an expensive asset, and you got to unload that expensive asset sometimes. Just make sure you get a haul like some of these people. Or if you'd rather have Jalen Waddle like that one dude did, or Austin Eckler, or Amon Ra, or if you'd rather position the wide receivers or get another running back, whatever you want to do, you can probably do it with Kenneth Walker Probably just not B. John Robinson because he's so expensive. The next running back we're looking at is a mid-tier running back. He's a veteran. He's going to be hitting the free agent market here soon. But he's got a lot of explosiveness in his step. He can be productive. And it's going to be interesting where he goes in free agency. I'm talking about Miles Sanders from the Philadelphia Eagles. Or soon to be away from the Philadelphia Eagles. And this was from a request from a subscriber. So thank you for the submissions. And I'll take submissions. And I'll make sure I make them priority for future videos. So I love that. But right now. In drafts. December ADP. January is going to roll out here soon. 
69th player off the board, running back 22 off the board. So he is down there a little bit, but still holds values, kind of in that tricky part of drafts. Will be a free agent in 2023, kind of makes the waters a little bit murky. Turns 26 in May, which is a little bit older for a running back in dynasty fantasy football terms. He rushed for 1,271 yards and 11 touchdowns. That's a quiet 1,200 yards, if you ask me. Had 3.02 yards after contact per attempt. Four RB1 weeks, five RB2 weeks, nine double-digit performances, had seven bust weeks. When I say bust weeks, it was like five fantasy points or less, maybe six or less. Looking at the whole season overall, really, he was either going off, getting you double-digit points, or barely anything. But still, 1,200 yards rushing is nothing to shake a stick at. Looking at the trade analyzer, the calculator has him valued as a late first-round pick when compared to rookie drafts, when you're looking at just straight-up currency for what you want with the picks and one QB. Obviously, it's a little different with two QB here considering the positional values, but you kind of get a gauge here. When we're looking at the trade finder, trades that actually happen on my fantasy league, him for Jerry Judy, him for Melvin Gordon and a first, him for DeAndre Swift, him for a first and third, him for Tyler Algier, two seconds and a third. Him for Terry McLaurin. So really, he's all over the place here. And this is really giving you an idea of what the market's doing. Obviously, you would like to see 100 trades, but we're not getting that. We're getting like five at the most, six, seven on the high, three or four on the low on most players. Him for Jerry Judy, I don't see that happening on most leagues. I think a lot of people are going to pivot to Jerry Judy due to his age, due to what he did at the end of the season. Melvin Gordon in a first is interesting considering the trade analyzer had him valued for a late first. So that kind of makes sense. Him and DeAndre Swift isn't going to happen anytime soon. So that was just a, a deal that just happened. First and the third sounds like the sweet spot. Because really when you're selling them, you, you kind of feel weird just giving them away for a first. You got to have some guts when doing that. But if you get a little bit of an insurance policy on the back end with a third, kind of feels good. Kind of feels like a good starting point. I don't think that you're going to get all the deals done with that but it's a good starting point you may have to back off that third and go with straight first which i'm fine with this is a good draft running backs deep you'll probably catch a starting running back on the back end of that first round if not a decent wide receiver in one qb leagues you're probably going to get three or four starting wide receivers off the rip in this year's draft easy if not more because this is a tough draft class at the running back position they got some tough guys him and Terry McLaurin. I can see a lot of people pivot to Terry McLaurin unless you really, 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 really want to speculate on Miles Sanders. From what I gauge from the market, a first and some change you want to start out with. And you may want to just take the first depending on how you feel like it. I think 110, 118 is probably where you're going to get it. Obviously 101, 102, 103, 104. They're just going to take the players. They're just going to take those rookies. So really... 105 walked back as far as you can get it is where you're going to go in the first round. I like to call it the walk it back strategy. I'll just pick a spot in that round and I'll just go to each manager just to see who bites, just to see who takes me seriously and just go from there. I try not to start too high, but also don't want to start too low. I think that's kind of obvious, but that's probably what I do. Looking at this, considering that. The trade analyzer's guy I'm valued as a late first. We're seeing a first and third seem like the most interesting thing here. We also got the two seconds and the third in Tyler Algier. If you're going to go two seconds, make sure one of those seconds are in the top part of the second round and the other ones mid part of the second round or higher. Because once you get to the back part of the second round, you might as well just call it out a third round pick when you're looking at hit rates. You're looking at hit rates of like 10% or less, maybe like 5% range. So the odds are very not good there and the chances of miles sanders going to a good team could still happen he's got some pop in the step he just rushed for 1200 yards so you really can't just give him away either but if you're doing two seconds a prospect and something else make sure those seconds are on the top end you don't want any back end second because that might not even help you odds wise when it comes to building your team i know this is a stacked draft there might be a player or two in the back end of that second round, but the odds will start to stack against you 
once you get that far down. He will be 26 years old. He's got over 2,000 snaps under his belt. So that's something you want to take into. We do not know where he's going in free agency right now. You just got to speculate with your gamble here. If you sell him now, you're selling him where you know where he's kind of priced at. If he has to wait in free agency or if he goes to a less than optimal spot, he might take a little hit in value. Rookie draft value might increase to where the rookie picks are worth more than what they are now to the point it's hard to get what you can get. For Miles Sanders off the trade market, that's something you want to think about. Miles Sanders could go to a fantastic situation. What if he's projected to be the RB1 to the Chiefs or he goes to the Bills and he's paired with James Cook or something like that? Then his value will increase a bit, but it's not going to go to the moon. It's not going to go up to Bijan Robinson territory. It's not going to go up to those top guys' territory. He might give you that production. You may want to hold, or you may want to just sell too, see what you can get. Just kick the tires. Maybe you can get a reactionary trade. That's something you want to look at too as well. But there's a lot of options. Every league's different. Everything's fluid. That's why I never call a player buy or sell because it's malpractice to do that because we're talking about a market that is comprised of thousands of markets which means there's a million variables out there that we have to deal with and now going to our garbage fail kid our cheap running back that we're looking at that we want as a stash or he's on the back end of a roster and we need to know if we want to keep stashing or not today we're going to look at samaj p ron of the Bengals, 165th player off the board in adp RB55, he's 27 years old, historic for running back standards in Dynasty Fantasy Football, had 397 rushing yards and two touchdowns as a backup in Cincinnati. His value is consistent with him being a backup to Joe Mixon and getting that volume because when he gets that volume on that team, it really ignites his flame for fantasy because he can be productive when he gets the role, but he's going to be a free agent in 2023. So what is going to happen to him going forward? He was on a cheap deal with Cincy, two years, 3.3 million. So it's not out the realm of possibilities. If they want to keep with consistency and just keep him on the roster, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. He's cheap. They might as well. He's 27. Or they might as well go to the draft, getting even cheaper running back that they like off tape and roll with that. They're running backs. You can kind of plug them in, plug them out. So we got some options here. Or he goes to another team. He might not be kicking around the league much longer, but that is not a surprise anyways. I'm not really coming out of nowhere with new information, but his allure was a few times out of the year. He gets starter reps with the Bengals, and that gave you a couple productive weeks where you might be able to slide him in at flex, use him as a patch-up piece, or if you got him in best ball, that's awesome for you as well. I have him in a few best ball leagues, and those couple games out of the year, I got an RB1. So that is something cool about Samaj P. Ryan is that I love them in best ball while he's in Cincinnati. So we just got to watch what he's doing. But looking at Trade Analyzer, they got him valued somewhere between a third and a fourth round pick, somewhere in that range. So super cheap, a player who's pretty much free, trade finder, reviewing these trades, he's pretty much free. Samaje for fourth, Samaje for Andy Dalton in 2QB, Samaje for Daryl Henderson, Samaje for a third, Samaje for two thirds, Samaje for Kyron Williams. Just a garbage pail kid here, a free guy. If you want him, just get him as an add on in a deal. Don't go after him. Don't be giving him stuff away for him. If you're doing a trade with somebody, he's on the roster, just ask him as a throw in. Hey, I know we're trading these two running backs together, but you, I see you got Samaj P. Ryan right there. Can you just add him in as a throw in? Can you be a, a cheap play for me? Let's just sweeten the deal up. Maybe you got to add in something else. Maybe not. That's up to you to decide, but that's what I would do. Maybe get him as a throw-in. If he's on waivers, pick him up. Most leagues, probably not due to dynasty leagues being a little deeper, but you just have to make that decision. Watch him in free agency. There's a chance he may not be in the league much longer, or he's on the Bengals, and you know he's doing some Maja P. Ryan things in 2023. Just got to watch the tea leaves. But either way, even if he goes to a good situation, he's not moving more past a late third-round pick top end fourth round pick and rookie draft value it's not doing that he's 27 years old hasn't had a 500 yard season on his name in the nfl so honestly he's going to be a cheap asset no matter what happens so he's not a sell he's not a buy he's just a free chip there if you can get him for free 
Might as well if you can, if you want to. It's whatever you want to do. I have no opinions either way. Just a guy that, that can be stashed if you're interested in. But those are three running backs we're talking about this week that you could trade for, trade away, or do whatever you want with. It's your dynasty team. Make it the best you can. Let me know in the comments below if there's somebody you want me to talk about, and I will drop them in the next video or in one of the next coming videos. Also, hit that subscribe button on the way out. It's only going to make you a better Dynasty player. I'm dropping free knowledge here with stats, things that I find from charts and stuff from DynastyLeagueFootball.com and other sites. Really good knowledge and know. Also, will help your Dynasty teams, your redraft teams, and everything else. But I want to thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.